Welcome back to What RT Noobs. This is an FP4005 Stage 2. It's a tier 10 British tank destroyer. It's located on the southwest spawn of Mannerheim Line, otherwise known as Arctic Region. And it's under the command of Bioface. Yeah, it's a rather colourful FP4005. A very colourful one. Well, it looks like he's going to go to uh, the duck, as I call it. I don't know if you've actually called it the duck or seen it, but there's two spotting spots where you can actually shoot at the enemy across the valley. One on this side's called the duck because it looks like a duck, and the one on the other side's called the mouse because it looks like a mouse. Well, the AMX 30's got there before us, and he's probably going to attract some attention. If a little um, light bulb appears next to him, then uh, it's probably that he's already been seen. There's Arty on the enemy team, so they will probably fire at him. And in fact, somebody fired at him, and they saw... They saw Bioface. Okay, what have we got there? We've got a bat shot 12 ton in the distance. Oh, enemy Arty hits the SU-130PM. It's the shell landed next to the SU-130 PM, but we got hit with a splash for 99 hit points. He's got a reload time of 23.73 seconds. And he's fired a hash round at those enemy tanks, but I don't think he got anything there. He was aiming at the batch at 12 ton. Char Future appeared shortly afterwards. Now you don't have a whole lot of ammunition to spare with the uh, the Hesh Barn, as most people call it the, well the Dunny Barn, you know, because it uh, looks like a porta potty um, But you only get 20 rounds, so you really have to use them sparingly, otherwise you could end up running out of ammunition before the end of the game. Well, Bioface is just taking it rather coolly and almost totally relaxed, I would say. He's waiting for the enemy to come to him, which is a mark of a good player because good players don't force the issue. They don't have to. Uh, they let the enemy come to them if they're a tank destroyer. If there's a heavy tank, of course, they do have to go and confront the enemy if they're going to get any points. But, uh, oh, Bioface here. He seems perfectly chilled. And given the landscape, I think that seems natural. There's his opposite number, a T30. And now he's out of the game. That was a very brief game for the T30. The next target appears to be that T10. And you see Bioface just gradually picking a good spot to fire from. Okay, can he get the T10? He's right behind that wreck. Oh, but the 257 looks even better. And he's now at the game as well. So it's not working out too well for the enemy tanks at the moment. It's working out fairly good for Bioface. He's now looking at a 4502B, ignoring the T10, who's gone out of sight temporarily. Yeah, that 4502 is probably still there. But he's not going to fire until he's absolutely certain he's there because he doesn't want to waste a round. Oh, the T-10's appeared. And he's making a dash for it. Ah, uh, too late. <laughs> Three kills. Okay, pulled back behind cover. He wasn't, uh, it wasn't any risk there. It's tremendously difficult to get hit by RT in this position. So long as you don't move too far forward. If you move forward to shoot, you are at risk from Arty. So, Bioface needs to be aware of that. We can hit targets that are hiding behind what rocks, you know. Okay, 4502B just showing us the rear of his turret at the moment. But he's trying to prompt us to shoot. He's, uh, he's definitely trying to pull the fast one. We're not doing so well though as a team. Three tanks down on the enemy and Bioface is now having a quick look to see if there's anything he can kill on this side. Over there we've got a Jaeger route. Oh, 
Unfortunately, our T30 just died. That means now... Oh, there's a couple of tanks he can see. And one of them's an AMX 50B. And he's out of the game. Nice. So, four kills now for Bioface. The enemy in the south seems to be fairly neutralized for the moment. That 4502 can't really go anywhere. Not without getting the attention of an SU-130, a Heshbon, and of course our RT will be on him. But there's only four left on our team. Oh, and there he goes. There you go. He was seen this time, so he does have to move to get into cover because enemy RT, who is now dead actually, so <laughs> enemy RT is not going to be playing a part of this game. Didn't spot that. He died somewhere along the line. And, oh, here comes the Udis. Hello. Goodbye. 1,000 hit points, Mahesh round. It's certainly going to ruin your day. That's his top gun. There's only three enemies left. Actually, I think they might be able to. Yep, yeah, there's four on either team now. He might actually be able to get this. He's got six kills already. There's still four enemy. Oh, they come up behind him. Bat chats. Two of them. Kills the bat chat. 12, the 84. He can ram kill the other one if he wants to. But I think that bat chat's now out of rounds. Oh, no, he's not. Sorry. He's still firing. And we can't go forward to kill him because the object 430 is creeping up behind us. So we have to deal with him first. We're not loaded yet. That long reload time. Now he's gone. That's the Radleys. I think the the bat chat's still in reload, and we don't know where the Jaeger is. But I should think he's probably coming around the same direction that the object 430 was. Okay, he's loaded. He's had enough time now. And it's definitely looking good for them, except for, of course, he's down to 708 hit points. And that Jaegeru could wipe the smile off his face in one shot. And remember, the Heshbon does have very, very poor armor on its turret. No sign of the Jaegeru from that direction. Oh, Black Dog has found the Bat Chat. If the Bat Chat stays where he is, he's going to be toast. Auto aimed on. Yes! He landed the shell near him, and that was enough for the splash to take him out. Splash radius is 5.05 meters, so you can see this is why Arty can sometimes stirp an enemy tank, even if they can't actually land the shell on the enemy tank. They just need to land the shell near the rear of the enemy tank, and the enemy tank goes up in flames. Well, Black Dog's going to have a quick look, see if he can find the Jaeger. Last seen north of the enemy cap, Black Dog's very low on hit points. I would say Black Dog, but it is actually a girlfriend. A lot of people would call it the girlfriend. Oh, and the Jaeger is behind us! Now, Artie, do your shut, do your stuff. Stun him for us. He's coming up, but we just need him to be stunned. Yes, that's it. Artie does it. Now that Jaegeru is in a position where he's um, handicapped, because now he's slow and he's out the game, and that is a pulse medal, thanks to Artie. So let's have a look at the end of battle stats. It's an ace tanker for Bioface in the FP4002, uh, 4005, not two, uh, stage two. He managed to get a bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits in this one. He got 32. A duelist for taking out two tanks who damaged him during the game. A fine for effect for doing more damage than the hit points of his own vehicle. He also managed to get a pools medal for killing 10 enemy tanks. That's an epic. He also got a Battle Heroes, he got the high caliber for dealing the most damage in the game, and a Top Gun for getting at least 6 kills. Let's have a look at team score. 
5,837 hit points of damage from that one. Next high scorer was the FP3805 in his own team, the RT, who actually did help him a great deal right at the end. Distracted the uh, Jaeger by hitting him hard, stunning him, forcing him to slow down a bit, which gave Bioface the chance to put a round into him. When it came to kills, it was 10 kills for Bioface. The next high scorer being the AMX 50B that he took out. He had only three kills and the VK 4502 also had three. And nobody else had more than one kill. And when it came to base XP, yes, he's got the highest in that one. He's got the top in all three columns. 1,360 to Bioface. 930 goes to the SU-130PM. 744 goes to the FB-3805. He got 12 shots fired. 10 direct hits, 7 penetration, 3 splash. Damage of 5,837 hit points, of which 3,572 were at more than 300 metres. Those were the sniping shots he did from on top of the hill to the guys who were on the south end of the map. 6 hits received. I'm afraid all 6 were penetrations. Most of them actually came from the Batch at 12 ton, who was emptying his mag into well, by a face. Uh, unfortunately, he was nothing he could do at the time because he was unloaded. He did take out one of the Batch at 12 tons. But the other one got away, of course, until he came back and that may, he was able to get him that time. One hit received by way of splash damage as well. That was from the enemy RT. It was actually after the SU-130PM, but, uh, but it hit him by mistake and at the same time. 10 enemy vehicles damaged, 10 killed and 224 hit points of damage assistance. On a premium count, he earned 41,563 credits, got 50,000 from personal missions payout. And after repair and ammunition respawn, yes, he did fire a lot of hesh. But he got the results, and he actually made a profit. Only a tiny one, 3,483 credits, but he didn't waste that many hesh rounds, and that was the good thing. That's why he made a profit. 1,360 XP, times two for the first victory, 1,020 for personal missions payout, and took away 5,100 altogether. So a pretty good game, and he calls himself the king of the hill. Well, in this game, you were the king of the hill. And that little hill was where you <laughs> gained all of your hit points, um, even if you were at the base of the hill some of the time. But uh, yes, it was a particularly good battle for Bioface. And uh, yeah, well done. If you enjoyed that replay, please give this video a like and do subscribe to our channel. And thanks for watching.